If we hear a rumbling, we know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> or a shaking. Yeah. We'll, have to get right, we'll have to get right on it. Okay, affirmation of proper public notice. Yeah. Not proper notice, okay. Um, any audience to visitors? Anyone care to make a statement? Please hear me. Anybody online need to make a statement? Uh, so raise your hand. Okay, we don't see any hands, so we will charge on. Uh, review of the uh, minutes from the February 12th meeting. Uh, they were sent out, and there's a copy in your packet. Any additions or corrections to the minutes or from last meeting? I'll make a motion we approve. Okay, motion to approve the minutes by K. Is there a second? Second by Mary. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Uh, all right, minutes are approved. Um, we probably should have got a motion to file did is out of the networks. So we will get a motion and uh, excuse him. Sure, I move that. I'll second Kelly, that. second by Kay. All those in favor of excusing Kyle today, say aye. 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 Can I vote no? You can. <laughs> yeah, we'll let him know that. <laughs> 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 he's addicted. Okay. He's be careful. He's addicted. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> he can't serve on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. All right. So on to point five. Um. The Review of the bills for March 2024. Got to put out there and we have okay. a little bit of overlap from last month too. Um, just on how to end the report, Mary, that out. Um, that's this last month, just I'm thinking last year's total. <laughs> About five percent. Which actually wasn't too bad. We buy a, a lot of gas from Cook That's a part of the share. Yeah, I can look into that if you'd like. <laughs> Normally, it's not eighteen thousand. I'll look into it. Maybe Phil bought a year's supply. I don't know. It's a third of the counseling bill. <laughs> one of the counseling bills. Yeah. That was a big one. Okay, anybody have any questions? We can other than the uh, that we should all go into counseling and uh, we pay a lot for gas. Any other I'm comments? That or that are for sandwiches. You <laughs> <laughs> are very humorous today, aren't you? Oh. All right, are there any other questions or comments on that? Bills for the day for March. If not, I'll get a motion to approve those bills. I'll make a motion to approve them. All right, motion by Kays or second? I'll second that. Seconded by Kelly. All those in favor of paying the March bill, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Same sign. Okay, thank you. Bills are approved. Any vouchers uh, over 500000 No. None of this time. Okay, so any action. All right, on to Karen's treasurer's report. Take it away, Karen. Okay. So, good news. Good news. <laughs> uh, our balance at the bank is twenty one million seventy thousand one eighty nine ninety one. Our cash flow is showing that again, twenty one million seventy thousand one eighty nine seventy one. Our daily receipts totaled eight million one twenty seven three twenty one sixty seven. Our sales tax for February was $289,490.49. Is this stapling job an anti-Norwegian plot? Or <laughs> 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 that way, you don't like this. <laughs> too hard to follow for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, some of us are impaired. All right. And then um, I just have the delinquent and current taxes. So the total for delinquent taxes of what we took in was $48,390.50. And for 2023, uh, 503-6850. So I just kind of redid that form. So um, which the sales? Oh I, no! I'm just. Am I? Is this a rolling year? So this is actually February 2024 now, right? Mm -hmm. It's a rolling year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. On the sales tax, we're talking about. Yep. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Mm 
If not, can I get a motion to approve the treasurer's report? I move to approve the treasurer's report. By Kelly, is there a second? Second. Okay. Second, Mayor. Mm-hmm. Those in favor of approving the treasurer's report, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Same sign. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Mm-hmm. Treasurer's report's approved. Amy. Any, uh, Amy? She was there. Um, She's online. Oh, is she? Yeah. <laughs> there aren't any requests at this time. Okay. Thanks, Amy. I thought I saw you earlier. Now you're. Now you're <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So, no uh, uh, requests for grant funding or support to report. So, we'll move on to finance department. And we have our guest finance director, also known as Cassie, here to give us a <laughs> yeah. financial update. So, um, as I had stated to you earlier, um, that we, we were going to forego the financial report this month um, due to the circumstances in the, the finance department. Um, I didn't want to present you with information that I couldn't 100% uh, verify at this time. Um, for those online that aren't aware, our uh, finance director position is vacant. Um, we are working with the staff to make sure we have continuity. So we're making sure payroll's done, making sure our bills get paid. Um, met with um, the uh, finance people from different uh, departments again uh, yesterday uh, to go over um, some of our processes. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we have 2023 uh, tied up so that we can move forward with the audit. Um, if we don't have everything reconciled for 23, they will not. Um, to start. And um, as you guys know, we were quite delayed last year, so we're really trying to avoid that. Um, the position is posted. Um, it's been posted for about a week and a half. Um, happy to answer any questions as far as the department is concerned. Um, <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? When do you expect them? you'll do your first interview, knowing the way you advertise? Yeah, um, Trisha and I spoke yesterday about putting a, a deadline for applications, and I think we landed on April 1st. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after that, we'll start um, screening. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? If not, um, I think it's relevant to move into the discussion of possible action on the shortfall, maybe give a bit of a background yes. as well as possible. Um, so it was uh, recently discovered that our debt levy was not apportioned on to the 2023 real estate tax bills, um, which means we are looking at a revenue shortfall of approximately $2.2 million um, that we had expected to bring in this year. Um, we'll obviously be changing up some internal uh, procedures as far as that whole process goes uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, but I've had a couple meetings and um, Sean from Ellers is online as well um, about looking at some possible um, solutions. Um, if we want to borrow for the entirety of it, if we want to use some cash reserves, if we want to use some ARPA, Ho-Chunk. So we, we were looking at quite a few um, options here. Um, so you do have in your packets, um, and I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. <laughs> And just for clarification, I think we should state that the county board approved the appropriate amount. Yes. That was yes. Just so when the county board adopted process. the budget, I mean, when we levied everything, everything was on par. Like we we followed every proper procedure as far as the county board is concerned. And the shortfalls um, due to did not it was, the tax goal. Right. right. So the the error occurred when when that levy was apportioned onto the tax bill. Um, not by the treasurer. Not by the treasurer. Thank you. No, not by the county board. So yeah. Not by the county board. <laughs> um, so what you're looking at here, um, and, and you have this in your packets as well, but um, in column D here where we would normally levy our debt levy, which is our debt payments due down here, um, that did not happen. So the $10.8 million is what was actually levied. Um, so right now we're looking at how to make up this shortfall here. Um, in addition to we had um, projects that we had planned to borrow for and levy for next year. So in total, I just make sure I'm on the right screen here. Um, these are debt payments here, the 2.275 um, that we owe regardless uh, for this this year and then um, we had planned to borrow um, this debt proceeds 
for our capital project. So in total, um, the $4.4 million. So that's looking at our revenue shortfall for this year and what we had already planned on borrowing for. Um, that did not actually happen. And so um, what um, Sean has done is um, projected a 20-year bond. And you have that in front of you there. And what that would do is essentially we would go from the 10.8 million that we levied on the 2023 tax bills to the 12.7. Now with that, essentially our taxpayers would see an 18.24% increase because it actually went down this year. So instead of you know going from this 12.1 to 12.7, we're looking at going from 10.8 to 12.7, which is a significant jump. Um, in reality, when you look at where we should have been, it's really a 5% increase, which is a lot more um, palatable. Um, one of the options we talked about is using some of our general fund reserve in offsetting this so that this jump doesn't go up as much. Um, and that that's where it could be most impactful to use any general fund reserve because they're not seeing that 18% increase then. Um, it's a little less impactful if you put it towards um, the debt long term. But it really is, you know, what, what we're comfortable with um, right now. We have approximately $8.9 million in our um, general fund uh, uncommitted. Um, you know, in, in discussions, we've talked about doing kind of a, a patchwork. So yeah. what's projected for you here is if we borrow all of it um, and have, I'm going to hop back here. Process-wise, Cassie, um, if I'm understanding it right, we'd like finance to discuss and tee up a recommendation for the board to approve. Correct. <clears throat> okay. And then in the discussions, um, that Cassie and I have had, there are, you know, it's one, it's extremely disappointing, but it is what it is. And it's our, we need to react and we need to fix it. I don't want to kick the can down the road and put a big burden on the taxpayer down, down the line. We do have a number of, you know, pots here and there, rather than just burdening the general fund with a massive big hit. There are a bunch of pots here and there and some creative ways to, um, to fill the hole, you know, between ARPA, some general funds, some here, some there. And that's kind of what I'm hoping that the team would support and uh, minimizing both the impact to the board, to the general fund and to the public, uh, if that makes sense. So is that kind of where you're at, Kathy? Yep. Okay. And there was no insurance or anything to cover this. Yeah, it was just, uh, yeah. So All right. It's not, it's not okay. stolen funds, it's just. Um, no, we don't have any errors and omissions no. insurance, do we? Yeah, and I don't think that would even apply anyway. We, it was our fault. We knew the number, and we didn't apply it to the tax levy. So it's not like it disappeared or somebody lost it. Um, sellers. Yeah, uh, Sean and Josh are online. Did I, um, if either of you <laughs> want to hop in here in case I missed something? Holly's got her. Uh, yeah, uh, Cassie, can you hear me? This is Sean. Yes. Okay. I, I don't think you missed anything. Uh, I, just to reiterate, the borrowing that we showed, what what the what the finance committee, what the county would be borrowing for, would be your capital projects uh, for 2024. Right now, you plan to borrow for about two million, and then three million was going to be paid just through the cash as part of the budget and part of the levy, what we would do is we would borrow for four, which then would allow us to have enough cash to backfill the debt levy that was not included on the levy. That, that, uh, I guess specifically, that's what the county would be doing. And then the, the question is, would you do the borrowing for all of it or as the discussion has started here. Would you use other funding cash from different sources within the county to potentially reduce that borrowing? But the big picture wise, what 
what we've shown on the, the spreadsheets at this point is increasing the borrowing to cover about four million of the capital projects in the 2024 budget instead of two million, which is currently what's in the budget. Yeah, so Sean Cassie and I in our dis uh, discussion this morning, this is Rod. Um, I would like to be somewhat more creative and not lump all that four million onto the bond, just uh, kicking it down the road. There are things again like ARPA, maybe a bit of Ho Chunk. Take some cash that's laying around and you know will be spent one or the other, and not put all that on a bond. So ideally, maybe you know get creative to find a million, million and a half, and do the other two to three on a bond. I think that just seems to be a real balanced, you know, not a full debt levy approach kind of thing, but. Uh, you know, a good share of it because there's just you just can't avoid it. Uh, does that sound responsible, Sean? It it, it does. Uh, I, I think that I I completely follow where you're going. And uh, long term, borrowing less means less interest expense over the term of the debt. So there's cer certainly benefits to to that. Uh, I I think as part of the discussion, one of the other elements that the committee may want to kick around is is the point that Cassie made about where do we expect that total levy to go for budget year 2025 from 2024? And is there a mix of using cash to reduce the borrowing and maybe uh, some cash to uh, reduce the need to go from or do, to go the full 18% increase from 24 to 25? Uh, is there is there some thought about maybe uh, doing that over two years or three years, uh, you'd have to use some cash probably to achieve that by uh, lowering the levy by using that cash over the next couple of years. O or on the other hand, is the committee comfortable with going up, say, 15 to 18 percent and just being very uh, you know, direct that this is what occurred? You got to break taxpayers in 2024, but but 2025 gets us back where we were supposed to be all along. Uh, that might be part of, part of the discussion too. Just so you're not shocked when the budget times comes next year, you're, you're, the whole county board's looking at the budget and you're staring at a, a potentially an 18 percent increase, which I'm sure would be quite shocking. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Uh, stand by. I'd just like to have the team debate any any thoughts. I think it, and more even play. In, in my opinion, taxpayers don't like the shock, but. It is what it is as well, and maybe that's just the brutal truth that needs to be communicated as best we can. What do you guys think? I have a question. How much of the cash reserve could we use and not change our bond rating? Uh, Cassie, do you want me to start yeah. on that answer? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Cassie asked that question of Josh and I yesterday, and the, the uh, going to – the bond rating agencies, unfortunately, they'll never give you a, a, a yes, no exact answer. Uh, what I will tell you is your cash balance, and I'll try to help you as much as I can with the question, your cash balance is, uh, or your unassigned fund balance as a percent of the county's annual revenues is very strong. In fact, I think on the rating scale that the agencies use, they would view you at probably the AAA level for your cash balance. Uh, I think, Cassie, we figured it was about 65% of your revenues each year, which is very strong. Uh, and I think that does contribute, being at that level, does contribute to the AA minus level rating that you have right now. AAA is the best, then AA, then double, uh, then AA plus, then AA than double A minus where you're at. So you, your cash does certainly absolutely contributes to the fact that you guys have that excellent double A minus rating. I, I, this, I can't give you an answer to certainty, but I think if you fall below 50%, my guess is that that, uh, that will potentially have an impact. Uh, so you're at a, around 65 right now. Again, the rating agencies, unfortunately, would not tell us, won't tell us specifically that there's a number that you you um, absolutely can't below, go below. Uh, but just in kind of looking at the big picture, I think some reduction is certainly okay. Uh, but 
I would probably be cautious to go below that 50% of your annual revenues in your budget uh, threshold. So it's fair to say, Sean, to, to um, Kate's question, some type of reduction would not immediately mean different or higher interest rates moving so forward, right? Double A minus. No, it shouldn't be been anyway. Yeah, yeah it, and I, I won't belabor the point, but just real quickly from, I, I can tell you, here's what the rating agencies will look at. What they analyze when they analyze the county are your finances, your debt and pensions, your demographics, um, and also the management. And I think the stress points, as I understand them for the county right now, uh, would be the Vernon, uh, Vernon Manor mm -hmm. and the fact that that's losing money and, and can be a, a drain on the cash of the county. Uh, certainly this uh, issue with the levy for 2024 would be something that they would be looking into and analyzing as part of a, a rating. And then if you have uh, use of cash on top of it, those would be the three issues that they would be analyzing. Just trying to find out is, is this going to put additional stress on the finances of the county going forward? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Mary? Kelly? <clears throat> All right. Um, well, I think there's probably some stuff to be worked out, Kathy. Would you want to take the guidance that we'd like to balance the burden as best we can from the different resources and use that as the... How much are we comfortable with in order to... I mean, I think that's the... I mean, you don't want to, be, I would maybe suggest start looking at a, a one third to up to a half if we can bear it in terms of cash or alternatives, yeah. ARPA, general fund, Ho-Chunk. Um, there probably is not a half there in my gut feel, but, you know, if we did a third Close. and then did the bond, yeah. the rest, how do, they, how do we feel about that? Or do we try to be more aggressive without mm -hmm. fund payments? When you say half, are you talking about the potential four million? Yeah. I mean, so we, we could you could scrape together, it'd be challenging and really belt tightening between ARPA, general fund cash, uh, maybe some whole chunk current and or future. We could probably pull a hundred, two hundred thousand off of sales tax. We haven't done that for a long time. It's always been um, zero. So yeah, it's right. there's quite there's quite a probably two hundred thousand in there that we've just used as emergency. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> between those things right there, we've gotten a million, million two. Um, but otherwise, I think the bond is the best for the balance. This would be my suggestion. And originally, you were intending um, to borrow. What was the amount for capital debt? Two. About 2.2. Yeah. For, as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're sure it's going to go on for 2025. It's, it's the capital debt then. Yep. yep. That's the full amount. Yep. Okay. And that was planned and approved anyway. Mm -hmm. Just It's important to, yeah, to be considering that. This wasn't billed for. Right. If you, um, so one thing to note here. So if we do use some Ho-Chunk. Yeah. I'm going to pull up uh, the spreadsheet that you also have in your packet. Um, Amy, can you speak to this um, 200000 that we had set aside for the um, grant cash uh, match for 2022? Um, yeah, so that was that program we established to help county departments overcome match barriers with grants so they could apply for up to $100,000 in grant match funding so that they'd be able to apply. Um, currently out of that 200000 I have $60,000 that's on reserve for those two generator grants that I wrote um, to replace generators at our key county buildings. Um, the rest of it has not been uh, requested. So I would need 60,000 of that. To so you, out of the 200,000, we've not had any grant requests? Not from 22, just the 60,000. So that leaves 140,000 to re -out. Wow, I thought that was, I thought the requests were maxed out from 2020, or that was when it was really new. So that's, that is open, un, unappropriated funds then more or less, Amy, correct? Or uncommitted, I should say. It was appropriated for this program. We didn't get the request, so it's uncommitted. 
Correct. So, okay. and just remember, this is separate from the community development grant program. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, okay. Go ahead. Um, right. Last month, we had um, all the way at the top that new building fund yep. um, reallocated to general fund. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think process wise anything's actually happened with no. that. So uh, that's, that was not, another. That's not been uh, on the general fund numbers yet. So it's another. Yeah. Another. another. Um, so I thought there was potential there. Um, and this is 120 for the 2022 of that new for 110, yeah. 110. Well, a potential 140, 140. from the, um, because the 60 she wants to keep for the, yeah, um, yeah for the grant yeah. cash, grant cash match. Well, it's and then there's another 108,000 for the new building fund that we agreed, but we did not actually officially vote on that. Or maybe we did, but it, hadn't, it hasn't been executed yet. Yeah. Um, the grant match support program for this year. Uh, you want this to keep that? I, I think we do. I mean, so it's that's been popularity. The last thing we want to do is, you know, show the money and then pull it away. Yeah. Uh, and again, but it's things like this exercise we're doing right now where there's there's 100 here, 50 mm -hmm. there, 120 there. Right, which is the, the yes. whole purpose of this this discussion yep. is, um, you know, what where can we pull from? What can we reallocate? Um you said you wanted to do two hundred thousand from sales tax. What's the total available, Karen? Um, it's on that sheet. Is I it, mean, it'll. I mean, but we have to keep a minimum. Well, we'll right? I will transfer the budget number. So, like this three point nine is what's in there right now, and I transferred. I actually did that in March. I do that in March every year. Okay. Um, two point one was the budget, so I transferred two point one. So. Next month, you'll see the updated balance. If that makes sense. So you took so 2.1 so one out of the 2.9. Yep. Okay. Yep. I moved that to the general fund. Into the general fund. Yep. Okay. okay. So that's. So yeah, I I think okay. every year it's in the budget. There's like a a number that yep. okay. finance takes, and it's always been zero since I've started here. We've never used it to balance right. the budget. We have historically, but luckily we haven't needed it because right. it's again. Yeah. But we could maybe need yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we can need it now. So. Yeah, a good chunk there. We've got. I, I would like to see us you also lean on ARPA, and yeah, that's kind of a slush fund that's out there. It's going to go away eventually. Mm -hmm. This is a good hole to plug it into. So yeah, let's pull um, up that. Um, should have pulled in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not following good. But. Yeah, and they're actually, they're maybe even a little bit more. We talked about um, those allocations for salaries in 2023 yep. um, and not basically giving them more than they actually needed. Um, yep. I don't know where Bobby went with the, um, that process. Um, I did want to um, note that we will um, be coming to the board uh, most likely in May with the results of our wage study. Um, we did build a $200,000 contingency into the budget for this year, but we're looking like we might need a little bit more. Um, so I would be comfortable at this point saying, you know, um, like 500000 in ARPA yep. is probably yep. a comfortable number. Yep. So maybe add that then in, in the mix. And I think if you show that we're you know, not robbing anything, but trying to pick up some pennies here and there with a real broad solution, mm -hmm. that we're already at a million then. Um, yeah, just shy. So what about when I also talked about Ho Chunk? It wasn't just cleaning up. We have used it. You know, we know about the budget issue now. The check we got this year is in the bank, and it's not a it's not appropriated yet. Correct. So let's hop back to that. Where? Because we historically we've only once spent the money ahead of. Stop if I if I'm am I stating that correctly, Karen? Say that get, again. I'm sorry. If I recall, we get the check from Ho Chunk like in February, March, March and sure. we don't spend it until we appropriated that fall and then That's spent right. the following mm -hmm. budget. That's year. right. Yep. We got the check already for this year. Yep. To say, hey, we're going to fix with budgets not approved, but we're going to take two fifty out of it. We've done at least two fifty before historically to fix the budget. Just saying, um, not that it's right or good, but it's it's been done and it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just trying to get ourselves closer to maybe a million, million and a half on top of what we've done you have there. The current balance for Ho Chunk. Bobby did all that. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, it'll, so it'll be it'll be the one point two minus two hundred thousand that we have to give the county. So town of Whitestown and Starkey. Mm -hmm. I thought it was about no, it's a it's a million, hundred thousand. Sorry, yes, it's eighty three and, and thirty seven. Yeah. 
So it's a little over a million that we have, but to say that we pre-appropriate. 120,000. Right. We pre-appropriate uh, 250,000 of the remaining million plus. I get this to 1.198 million. So 1.2. Of the, yes, so that's 50% of the missing 2 million, 2.2 million, and then it's a, a quarter of the 4 million. So it's, that's a pretty good, maybe, maybe double check that and mm -hmm. round it off. And I mean, that'd be. How not, much we've taken out of sales tax? 200,000. 200,000. Thank you. 210. It's 200. Yeah. Okay. If we did the 1.2, um, for this year, and then um, we borrowed the 2.2. Did you mean that we could use cash? Everybody, they forgot to take the net card. Can you please mute yourself? Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> yep, it's everybody. We heard it. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody. I needed it. There. God. Um. If we did that, um, we could talk then about using um, cash to bring that that yeah. levy amount down over the course of a year or two. Um, what are we comfortable with with borrowing? I think we should definitely borrow the or bond the, the what we had planned already. Mm -hmm. So that's the two, and then that's, I'm saying yeah, the balance, that's, the, that's, balance that's the one. That's one approved. That's that's cash. Cash. Yeah, that's approved. Okay. So refresh how you're getting up to the 1.9. I've got 500, ARPA, 100,000, 250 from this year slash what we would allow them to spend next year for Ho-Chunk. 148 from past Ho-Chunk. 248 from past Ho-Chunk. Because we had 140 from the 2022 and then 108. I didn't carry my one. Sorry. It's okay. That's a big difference. <laughs> 248. We're doing some quick math here. So 200,000 from sales tax. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit that I'm not coming up with. Okay, so I had the 200,000 from sales tax, mm -hmm. 500,000 from ARPA, mm -hmm. um, the 140 plus the 108 from Ho Chunk, another 250 from Ho Chunk Reserve, mm -hmm. got us to just under 1.2 million. Okay, for some reason in my head, I had heard 1.9. So that is 1.9 what's left? 1.19, I said. 1.19, yeah. okay. Um, so then we talked about borrowing for the uh, 2.2 million in capital that we had already planned for for this year. Definitely then. And then you yeah. the cash to offset the levy okay. for um, next year and possibly the year after. So it's not going up as much. Yes, borrowing what we had planned. Yep. Um, but what we're shortfall, I'd really like to not have to pay interest on that. I agree. As a taxpaying citizen. I agree. <laughs> Especially so, if we have some that we can draw on. I yeah. Mean, it's, Without yeah. causing a shift in our bond rating, of course, too. So yeah. then I'm going to pose the question to Sean and Josh then. So the $2.2 million that we plan to borrow um, for those capital purchases, does it still make sense to do the bond for those? If we're borrowing just the $2.2 Yes. Yeah. In the current market, um, now you guys in the historically have gotten some exceptional offers from banks in the area, interest rate wise. Uh, but what we're seeing in the current market is the interest rates on a, a 20 year issue, uh, if you want to go that long, are going to be uh, south of, of 4% if you go to the securities market. But if you, you're looking at going to the bank market right now, they're probably limiting themselves to a 10-year term. And even with the 10-year term, a lot of the proposals we're seeing are in the very high four, some up into the very high 5% rates uh, for 10-year for loans. Those are the kind of bids we've been seeing recently for bank financing. Uh, because you've had such great success, I don't think there's any harm in at least asking some questions. But my uh, my instinct would be what I've been seeing is that the lowest cost financing option for this year's uh, would be in the securities market. And that's even including the cost of issuance involved with uh, with going to the securities market as opposed to a direct bank financing. Thank you. When we do it that way with the bond, 
is there a prepayment penalty with banks? Good question. You can't. I mean, you can pay it off whenever without having a problem. This bonding, I thought you had to go the full 20 years. Did you hear that, Sean? I did. Uh, very good question. So the uh, I'll, I'll answer the one about the the um, prepayment, uh, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the question about the term. You can do whatever term you want. You could do two years, you could do five, 10, 15, 20. That, that's totally at your discretion. If you do a 20-year bond issue, I would say the first eight years of the 20 years would be non-prepayable, but after the eighth year, you would be able to prepay at any time. On a 15-year issue, I would say it's probably the first seven, six or seven years would be non-prepayable. And on a 10-year issue, the first six years would be non-prepayable, the last four would be at the county's discretion uh, if you wanted to prepay it. Again, you wouldn't have to prepay, but you would have that option uh, starting year six, seven, or eight, depending on uh, the term of the loan that you're doing, which again, county has 100% uh, discretion that, to say, we want to do a 10-year in the securities market. We want to do 15, 20, totally up to you what you want to do. Is there any logic, Sean, behind, maybe we don't have to get in the weeds too much, but would you make a recommendation based on our, I guess, our conservative approach to risk? Is there any, is there one that's better than the other or is it just risk management? Uh, for, for the term of the debt? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, it, Cassie asked a, a question about that yesterday too. We talked a little bit about it is uh, we want to, certainly we don't want to issue the debt for longer than the useful life of the assets that we're actually financing. So we want to be cognizant of that. In the market, let, let's say that we're financing projects that all could be uh, 20 years or longer. Uh, if, if that was the case, uh, in the current market, you really don't pay much of a premium to go, go say, from 15, even from 10 to 20 years. There's not a lot of uh, yield curve spike that's going up there. So you don't pay a lot of premium uh, to go a little bit longer right now. And actually, in some ways, shorter term rates are higher because of the Fed's uh, raising of short term interest rates in the in the market. The the one last uh, item I would put into the mix, if if uh, before the the county would make a final decision on the term of the debt, and that would be what uh, what else do you see coming down the horizon? I think it's always a good uh, good exercise to look at if you have a capital improvement plan and you believe you're going to need to issue debt over the next couple of years of looking at this issue for 2024 in the context of both the existing debt that the county has, as well as debt that you anticipate you may have to do over the next couple of years. Uh, so again, just to summarize, interest rate wise, going longer, you're not paying much of a premium. So it's not costing you a lot more to go longer in the current market. But I think the best exercise for the county would be to take a look at your uh, future debt over the next couple of years, and then kind of see where a, an issue this year would fit into the plan going forward. Feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Thanks, Sean. Very, very good input. Um, you bet. A couple clarification questions. That that's the highway shop, right? Not the oh, highway stop. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the, the first one is the jail. I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Who doesn't work that? Sean, do you want to speak briefly on the um, restructuring of that uh, balloon payment? Yeah, would you mind throwing that up on the screen? I don't, uh, well, here, no, I, I gotta, actually I've got it. I got to share it. I have it. I just uh, yeah. am not a Teams expert here. There we go. You're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> okay, thanks, Cassie. Yep. So uh, what we did here, just for long-term view purposes, uh, on the highway shop, not stop, sorry about that, uh, in 2029, the county has a balloon payment of uh, about 2.7 million that's due in 2029. So if in column J of the spreadsheet that Cassie has up on the screen right now, what we've done is just extended that balloon payment, assuming that the county will need to do that and they won't have the cash in 2029. So that that's what's going on there. The, the Vernon Acres also has a balloon payment payment. You'll see that in uh, 2033. With um, the issues surrounding that, we, we weren't sure what's going to happen with that, uh, everything around Vernon right now. So we just 
left that in there, but it's very likely we would need to do something with that balloon payment as well in a future uh, future years. I wonder if the other one shows you what happens. Yeah. We don't. So if if we don't restructure that debt, as you can see in 29, um, we have a $3.6 million debt levy. Um, so that is, that's the balloon payment he was referencing, and that's the purpose of, of spreading that out over um, you know, X number of years rather than that big payment hitting that one year. Yeah. And one other thing I'll mention, you, you may say, well, okay, if we're going to do a new issue this year, uh, in the column here, we're, we were showing an issue uh, financing everything and not using some cash, which I think you've decided you're certainly going to apply some cash this year. Uh, the, the the question may come up, well, should we refinance and get rid of that balloon now? In a lot of cases, I would say yes, but because the interest rates on the 2019 and 21 issue are so good, Absolutely. I think it's it's <laughs> not really worth uh, refinancing those. You might as well stick with the rates you got uh, and we'll keep monitoring it. And if there's a a time in the future, you know, that, that interest rates are commensurate with the one you're paying, it, that might be a better timing to, to extend those balloons. Good point. Yeah, agreed. It's okay. It's quite a long time. Good discussion. Uh, a lot of a lot of big numbers, but uh, I like the balanced approach, Sean. Good guidance. Thank you for your time and input there. What What happens if we if we go as we've talked about here? What will that do to the tax left next year? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. You want to bring it back to the first sheet? So the yeah. levy, if I understand right, still goes up, but it does not, the variance, the, that percentage right. that sell the shock, uh, Mary, is 5% instead of 18. Okay, but I, I, that's what I wanted to be sure. Is it 5% or is it some variance in between 5 and 18? It, it's Sean, it's a yeah, you want me to start that, Cassie? So sure, go ahead, what, Sean. What's going to happen uh, if you look at the number in column E, line five, the debt levy? If if we finance the entire four million, the um, the one million eight oh nine is the projected total debt levy for levy twenty four, collect twenty five for the county. Now, if we say cut that in half and we only finance the 2.2 million, that 1.8 million will go down, but it's not going to go down a tremendous amount. It'll probably go down to, I, I'm just going to pick a number about 1,650,000 instead, instead of 1,800,000. So 1,650,000, Cassie, if you were to just to type that number in there, uh, you're, you're going to get a sense as to what the impact would be um, on the levy over the 2324, which is currently the 18 percent. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Cassie. No, that's okay. <laughs> I just had to go grab the keyboard. I don't, I don't really have it here. Let me see. If it'll let me. Yeah, I think it should. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, bear with me. So that would take it down to about 16. Point seven percent. The uh, change it down here, John. Yeah. employee savings. Yeah. So that's where, if you really want to have a a more significant impact on the levy for twenty four twenty five, you may need to consider using an additional influx of cash when you set your budget this fall for one year and maybe instead of going from the 10 million eight all the way up to 12 million six maybe you go up to 11 nine and then in the next year you pull the cash out and then you're up to around the 12 six 12 seven that would be another way to try to dull that impact uh over the next couple of years to to not have it really spike in just one year again it's totally a policy decision i i the, the more you, the more you use cash, the more you reduce, uh, the, or the, you issue more debt, the more long-term expenses and long-term loss of interest earnings you have. So it's really a question of how you, how you want to, uh, try to best, uh, handle the, the impact uh, in the coming years and what you guys think is most acceptable for, 
for the county taxpayers. Yep. Any questions for Sean? I th are we in consensus then that give Cassie the guidance to put a package together and some kind of resolution that has a balance of what Sean's suggesting? I think it'd be irresponsible to just kick the can down the road and throw it on future generations. But taking too much cash out right now is also not all that responsible. Mm -hmm. So a good balance is the recommendation. Yeah. All right. Not a fun thing to deal with, but appreciate the team's approach and getting it done. All right. Question? Yeah. Um, um, I think we're saying the right thing, but do you want all the numbers in the motion too, Cassie, or, or do you um, want the guidance of balance of cash and, and debt and bond? I think that's sufficient to yeah. put okay. together the resolution. And if you want to maybe rip it off to the, to the team before. Yeah. So I'll just, uh, just go through what we had already discussed. So uh, 200,000 from sales tax, 500,000 from ARPAS. Um, the Ho Chunk, the 140,000 uh, from 2022, the 108,757.24, that was um, from the new building fund from Ho Chunk, um, an additional 250,000 from Ho Chunk Reserve, um, which got us. Can you add the Ho Chunk Reserve just to make sure that that's it's, it's linked to unapproved budget from this year's check? Uh, it's reserve. There is really no reserve. It's just prepayment that's not been appropriate. Anymore. Right, so right. I, I know we all know what we're saying, but just for the record, that, yes. that could be yeah. misleading. 2024. Could we also use the $13,651.06 that Amy Oliver found this to be free to reallocate <laughs> from the flood recovery? It was Ho Chunk? Yeah. We could. It's I don't just by 14000 but it I'm be. like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a so little so that extra. That's a creative thing farmer thing in the repair She's. Okay. We all pay taxes. <laughs> and uh, all right. was so that got us right to about 1.2 million. Then so we talked yeah. about borrowing um, for the 2.2 million in uh, capital projects that yeah. we had planned. Yeah. And then we will um, look to use cash to offset the levy in the future. I don't know how I'm going to word that in the resolution, but we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. I think he can help. Yeah. Yes. We'll worry about that on the phone. I guess the goal is to be responsible as a finance team and to do the best we can to make a solid, responsible recommendation to the board because we don't want this whole grenade blown up in front of the whole board meeting. It'll take mm -hmm. all day, you know. Well, and I think, you know, like we discussed, this is a good mix. Yeah. A good, you yeah. know, we're not borrowing at all. We have some options. We're pulling yeah. funding from different sources. Yeah. I'm going to throw out another question. We're not to it on the agenda. I hesitate to say it because people get paranoid. They think this is what you propose, but it isn't. It is something that the board will probably have to consider. So we've looked at a management concept for Vernon Manor. And if we went that route with one of the projections that's out there, that would mean the staffing becomes uh, staffing for that management company and they would come off of the county's payroll, which will make a huge difference in, um, well, it has the potential to make a huge difference in terms of expenditures for salary and fringes. And so is there any projected potential savings there that might be able to be attributed if the county were to do that at any point in 2020? Possibly. Yeah. Um, right now, the revenue that we receive, receive is supposed to offset the mm -hmm. salaries. Um, but what we've seen um, especially with the increase in the nurses pool is that it's not, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's where our biggest expense has been. Um, so it's possible. Um, we're still um, ironing out what that management agreement might look like and who's responsible for which costs. So mm -hmm. I don't want to throw anything out there because nothing is solid right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I can say we would have some additional um, property insurance 
savings because if if we do go that route, they would take over the property and liability workers' comp insurance. Um, that and it was the for. I guess it was the insurance component of it that I was thinking. Oh, is there something? I do believe there would be some savings there, but I'm not. I, I I'm not. 100% confident to give you a number today. Mm-hmm. Until that's locked in, that we can't. Right. I don't want to count on it. For okay. Anything. All right. Didn't mean to delay you. I just threw it out as an idea. And right. I don't want anybody online getting more nervous. <laughs> I'm going to do this because yeah. I don't know that. All right. Well, well, are we also, possibly throw it out to banks. I know Sean didn't think there was a possibility, but. Some other times we've come to this meeting or to a finance meeting and have had phenomenal rates given to us by banks that normally they don't give to others. So that's why I'm just wondering if that would be a possibility too. Um, Sean, is, are you still on? I am, Cassie. Is there any harm in, in um, what Kelly suggested as far as reaching out to local banks to see if they would be willing to to give us a lower rate on any of that? Debt issuance versus bond versus bonding. Yeah. Just yeah, I, I don't think there's helpful. any harm in uh, getting a sense from them as to what uh, what they would be able to do. No, I I, I think I, again, you guys have such a strong track record. It it certainly makes some sense. Yep. Did we before we move on from that action? Did, did we need a, a vote on the motion? Yeah. You, we were summarizing and then we, had we were question. summarizing. Yep. Yeah. Then we had a question. We didn't. We haven't had a motion okay. yet. So the motion is to propose for the board a resolution that states we will uh, tackle this ch- financial challenge through a mix of uh, cash, debt, and um, I guess allocate, not allocation, uh, a, a, how, what we, what, what's the addition of all these different things? What's the allocation, allocation of existing sales tax, our yeah. uh, funding. Um, so that's that's a that's a messy one, but you're gonna put that in a document and send on to us. So does anybody have any questions on that? If you don't I mean it's a lot to restate, but I think we have enough to vote on the direction. Um so that's the motion. Um do we have a does anybody want to make that motion officially so we can vote on it? I will make that motion. I feel odd not having numbers to do that, but you just reiterated where that comes from. Yeah. So the only thing we would truly be putting toward bond or loan would be what was already planned. What we had planned. Already planned. Yeah. Yeah. Then I will make that motion. I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? All right. And then next steps, Cassie, you share that with us via um, email. We can kind of give yep. feedback before putting in the board packet. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Very helpful. You You bet. Everyone have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Good discussion. Not not a fun project, but appreciate everybody being creative and and responsible. Move on to 11, Health Department Budget Resolution. Any libraries online? Mm -hmm. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for your time. I know you have a very busy meeting, so I'll try and make this brief. Um, Basically, just sharing some budget amendments since the start of 2024 uh, for transparency um, with our new policy. So we have some car seat funding to the tune of $4,000 with a $1,000 match uh, that will be used to purchase car seats. Um, for those that are in need of a new car seat and meet um, certain finance requirements. Um, Our women, infant, and children's or WIC consolidated contracts, often um, the state will amend the funding throughout the year. It's not unusual for us to get changes in those contracts. So that's basically what that is. Um, We applied for a medication safety initiative grant with the opioid steering committee that um, was approved for $25,000 to purchase lockboxes to distribute in the community. 
we hope to be doing some lead testing and licensed daycare programs. That's a state grant that was offered to us. It aligns with our environmental health um, initiatives currently. And then lastly, we have a consolidated contract vaccine funding, um, and this is per for promotion of vaccines to um, our VFA patients, so our, or, I'm sorry, uh, Vaccine for Adults program um, with the state. So they're all pretty straightforward. Are there any questions around these? Okay. Uh, could you tell me how many car seats this grant will purchase or what you're planning? Sure, that's a great question. So this grant is one that we typically apply for every year. Um, it's dependent on the need, I believe, and don't quote me exactly, but I believe, um, you know, the average price of a car seat is around $100 for a convertible car seat. So we could potentially spend, you know, get up to 400 car seats. I don't believe we've done the full number ever. Um, it's a reimbursable model. We have that many babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we give the car seats out to um, mothers if they come in for a car seat check and their car seat is found unsafe. Um, and they don't have the financial means to purchase a new one, then we're here to help them with that. It's a great program. Okay. It was approved. Um, we took this to our Board of Health yesterday, and it was approved unanimously. So we ask for your approval to move forward uh, for awareness at the county board level. If it's awareness and not budget variance, do we have? Uh, no, it is a budget variance. Oh, it so um, it's basically this um, resolution um, is additional funding for all of these programs that we are now accepting that funding and it'll be reflected both in the revenue and the expense. Okay. Um, but net budget, budget changes. Zero. Zero. Okay. Right. That was my. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, so increase. Well, so it's expense we, and the right. income. Your, your matches were included in your budget. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. All right. Well, fine. We're happy to support it. Again, I'm process wise, not sure we needed to, but um, that will be asked at the board level, and I'm sure it'll pass the flying colors, Amy, because there's it's the answer is zero. So, um, but uh, as a point of order, we can make a motion to support the uh, resolution. Do we have a motion? A you know, it was unanimous before Kelly, that. Yeah. the chair of uh, the health department. <laughs> and we have a second? Mm -hmm. Second by Mary. Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving resolution of the Board of Health budget amendment, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you very good for that, Amy. Thank you very much. Are gone to 12. Did we cover all the whole chunk now? In our I, I think we did. Um, I don't have any, you know, updates as far as this is concerned. Okay. That's what we just did. Good. And the, okay. that's a check for this year. It's already in the bank. Yeah. So that's good. Yes, it is. All right. Anybody, any other questions on whole chunk? Otherwise, we'll drive on to ARPA. And we may have answered ARPA as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so current. Maybe, maybe state that so we did the 500 and we kept some back reserve for for the clients. wage study implementation um i don't think we'll need all of what we kept back but i'd like right, to keep right. enough of just that we have that in the yeah. numbers and then the minutes yeah. that we recall that yeah. it was set aside so okay and then we've got uh request for her to manage is that yeah. was that in year or is that something new um that is something new. So we had um, on your ARPA spreadsheet, uh, we had 60,000, if you recall, uh, set aside for that feasibility study. So um, we've been having several discussions at uh, Vernon Manor Board of Trustees ab about said feasibility study. Uh, we had two firms that we interviewed. Um, we did select one. Uh, while we were in the process of going through that, uh, we were also approached by uh, Bethany St. Joe's. Um, about a possible management agreement. Um, what we would like to do is do some further investigation into that option before we jump right into a feasibility study. Um, with that, regardless of which way we go, either with the management company or moving forward with the feasibility study, we're going to need a physical plant assessment. 
um, of the facility. So if we're jumping into a management agreement, we're, we're going to need to know what our, our capital uh, projects are coming up because those are still under a management agreement. Those would still be the responsibility of the county. Okay. So what, where were the, do we know where the bids were for the, the two that did come in for the uh, feasibility? Yes. Study? So the um, one that we selected was 92500 The other one was right in line. Okay. Uh, we received four. Um, one didn't give us a price. One was 195000 Um And those costs did not include a plant assessment. Correct. The plant assessment um, is not something that they would typically look at. Um, they would hire a third-party contractor. And so on a, on a high end, they gave us an estimate of about $15,000 for that physical plant assessment. So regardless of what, which option um, the county board ultimately goes with, if we go with the management company or if we move forward with the feasibility study, we're going to need the plant assessment done either way. So what the consensus was at Board of Trustees was to request the funding, the 15000 for the physical plant assessment while we further investigate the management agreement option so that we know exactly what that would look like so we can present options to the county board on do you want to go the route of the feasibility study or here's what a management agreement would look like? Yep. Did it. I miss anything, Mary? Nope. Okay. Got it all. <laughs> Doing good. All right. Yep. Well, nobody's excited about more spend, but I think it's a great investment and we got to do our best to try to fix this. So I'm fully supportive. I, I guess are we looking to simply get the alloc uh, suggest appropriation of 15000 from ARPA for this? Is that what they Okay. Um, and we do have a bit of that available left uh, in that in yeah, the right after. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Well, you want to make that motion then, Mary? I so move. Okay. I'll second that. And seconded by Kate. So, all those in favor of uh, supporting the allocation of 15000 of ARPA funding for physical plan assessment of Renamander mm -hmm. say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Good luck with that. That should be. Yep. Yeah, that's an important problem. Well, I mean, it's really, it's really important. And go up. Okay, so priority-based budgeting, we're going to leave that with Cassie. That will be remain a standing item. I have no update. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I should say, I have been working on, um, I'm meeting with Hannah um, Ultimate on Wednesday to look at um, what board, new board training is going to look like, and we're going to touch on that piece of it, and we'll, um, what we really need to look at for a board is capital planning as well. Um, so it's not being forgotten or anything, but, you know, Bobby and I were making plans for that. Yeah, um, yeah. So we'll we'll see how that ends up uh, unwinding here as we move forward. But um, I don't have any significant updates yeah. for right now. Oh, and when Mary's finance chair, I'm sure she'll continually support that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Um, so next budget or next meeting date, there's no date there. We probably uh, shouldn't. No, because our regular uh, time would have fallen on the date of the reorganizational oh, meeting, so the 16th. Yeah. So I did not put a date on um, for the agenda. Well, it'll be a new committee as well, so. Well, yeah. Unless you want to meet before it. Unless That's we want to meet in April, um, which we may we may need to, depending on what happens. That you know, sometimes we have referrals from other committees that come to finance before we go to board. We will have a board meeting in April. Um, so if we wanted to set a date, and if we don't need to have the meeting, we don't have to. Okay. What, what you know, you have the best overview of everything that's going on, Cassie. What, what would you suggest? See, I'm pulling that up right now. Moved a couple meetings around, so I'm a little, a little off on my game here. Um, the 11th, okay. um, we, we have concert, we have land and water in the morning, um, but maybe the afternoon. Um, that's as late as we really could. I mean, unless you want to have a Friday meeting, but I'm not a fan of that. We already have, <laughs> we already have heard of man in the morning. Yeah. And then busy on the 12th. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so is that okay with everybody? One afternoon. o'clock, we just draft it in if we need, if needed, and if not, that's fine. Okay. okay. What, on the 11th? The 11th, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Um, is there a particular time that works best for everyone? Well, sooner the better because I'm on. We're both on land and water, so yeah. one o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah, that works. That works for me. That works okay. for you guys. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah, can make it work. Right now.
Okay, excellent. All right, that's the end of the agenda. Anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn by Kelly. Is there a second? Second, sure. Second by Kate. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, same sign. All right, we're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Good discussion.